Hey, what's up, guys? This is Vicious765 here, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about fighting game mechanics and what actually makes a good fighting game mechanic. Now, this is something that I've been doing since about 2009, just delving deeper into fighter game, fighting games each and every day in a philosophical aspect, I guess. Um, now, I don't really read too much into fighting games as much as I guess I used to back in around 2010, 11, or 12-ish era because back then I was looking at, you know, what was safe, what wasn't safe, and like tears and shit, but now I'm just sort of chilling out and having fun with the games I play because, let's face it, I live in the Midwest in Indiana, so I mean, I don't think I'm going to be joining any tournaments anytime soon. Um, I was trying to go to the final round, but you know, life happens you know gotta save money gotta do shit around the house but anyway enough of my bullshit now i wanted to talk to you guys see what actually you guys think makes a good fighting game mechanic because a lot of controversy on every fighting game and i think that's what really divides communities like um one that i really seen that really uh you know I, that really stood out to me would be like in Tekken 6 or in Tekken Tag 2 when they had the bow mechanic or even in Tekken 7 when they had a tail spin mechanic because I mean the tail spin mechanic and the bow mechanic they're used to get more combos right to get longer extended combos so you can get the most damage that you possibly can and personalize it so you got a cool looking combo right now this is a thing because I used to bitch about bef before I you know delve into the fighting game community i used to bitch about it, that because i said you know what that's like grabbing that's like free damage but in all reality it just adds more depth to the game guys it adds more depth to the game and it makes the game funner and it adds a higher risk and a high reward you know like if you miss that uppercut i'm gonna punish you with something i'm probably gonna punish you with a launcher which is gonna end up with me getting a good six hit combo on you taking in probably at least a quarter of your life uh, maybe more depending on how good i am in the character now this arguably i think is a good the bound and tailspin mechanic i think they're good mechanics now i was arguing with a friend earlier now in Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend, see the negative penalty for those who are unfamiliar with the negative penalty is started when Blaze Blue started. And I, I don't know if it's in Guilty Gear or not, but it was in Calamity Trigger. And depending on how many backdashes that you do, um, you actually get a negative penalty, which I don't quote me on this, it doubles the damage that happens to you. Now, here's where I think there's a problem with that. Now, there are characters in the game who are specifically zoned, like New 13 and Lambda 11. I'm not saying that these characters aren't already in a good tier status. Like Hazama, he's in a pretty good tier status, and he can he has a lot of mobility, and that's part of his gameplay. But, you know, he can't really stay up close too long because he's not a pressure guy. He's a mobility type of guy. He's the I caught you type of guy, you know? Um... But moving on, moving along forward, negative penalty, it fucks with their game because they can't play the way that they were designed to play. And if they do, some of the, some of the time, if they do, then you end up getting penalized. Now, this is similar to turtling on Tekken. Now, turtling on Tekken, you should let turtlers punish themselves because... It's a strategy, guys. Manny Pacquiao lost to Floyd Mayweather because Manny Pacquiao wasn't aggressive enough. And I hate Floyd Mayweather to death. Yes, I'm black and I hate Floyd Mayweather. Fucking sue me. But I hate Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. I like him more and I want him to win. But he didn't because he wasn't aggressive enough. And even though Floyd, he was way too, you know, not really defensive, but he wasn't aggressive either. But because things are the way they are in boxing, he won because he got more recorded hits and he fucking got away from Pacquiao, basically. Now, this... Going back to Blaze Blue, this is where I think they should, you know, either nerf or upgrade, probably more along the lines of buff characters 
you know, and they're tools for going up against characters like New and Hazma, you know, or nerf New and Hazma and make different combo strings for them. But, you know, that's a mechanic that I don't really like is the negative penalty. And I'm not saying that because I was a victim of it in the past. I just think that it's kind of redundant to be punished for having good defense and playing a character they're suppo- the way they're supposed to be played. And in Blaze Blue Continuum Shift, they had a system called Guard Primer where certain moves would knock down your guard. So if you weren't barrier guarding, I believe, it's been a long t- time since I played CS, so don't quote me, it would break your guard. Now... It would break your guard if you didn't have barrier. And if you barrier too much and you didn't have any barrier left and your last line of defense was to just block, then you were kind of fucked. Because if you were Hazama and you got hit with three times with the same move, like if I were Ragna or if I was um, Tager and I just did a move that, you know, took away your guard primer, you're kind of fucked because, you know, that's all. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I just like to say with Tager. Tager had like seven guard primers, so there was no way of breaking his. So he could block all day and nothing would happen to him. Uh, but you guys see what I'm talking about, though? Um, that that mechanic was bad, so they took it out. And they got something called Overdrive in you know, Chrono Phantasma, which it sacrifices a burst. A burst is used when, you know, when you're getting attacked and you want them to get off of you and give you some, you know, some room. You use a burst for that. And the burst, you kind of need that when you're in a pinch. But with overdrive, you get buff moves, you get buff supers, you get invincibility on startup. And for some characters, you know, that could really change the game. So I think it's good. It's a good mechanic because it's like really depending on how confident you are as playing with that character. I think that's a good mechanic. Marvel vs. Capcom, let's move over to that. It has X-Factor. X-Factor is when you boost the power of <laughs> your characters. Now, it lasts a shorter amount of time and gives you less power on Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Um, depending on how many partners you got left. Like, if it's just you, it lasts a longer time and it gives you way more power. Now, coming from me... I didn't get ultimate coming from me. I didn't think that was such a great mechanic because of what they had in the game. Like Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, she needed to be nerfed. Now, that mechanic may have worked, but they had to, like, alter some characters. For some characters, the X Factor was way too powerful. Um, But what do you guys think makes a good mechanic? And what games do you think have good mechanics? Um, I like... The mechanic that Undernight and Birth has where there's a guard primer where if you guard pretty good or you're being offensive, your moves get a slight buff and you get, so to speak, a rapid cancel for um, doing so. Um, I'm trying to think of some other games. It's not nothing really coming to mind right now, but infinite block, um, anti-infinites like in Skullgirls where you just like keep infinites from like happening i think that's decent but it, they needed to work on it a little bit but really i just want to know what you guys think do you think that blaze blue tekken or it, just name any of your fighting game has good mechanics because i started thinking about that after we argued about negative penalty and street fighter 5 with its mechanics I don't know about it, man, because like it feels like Street Fighter Five is trying to catch up with other fighting games and put in as many mechanics as them. Like this V skill thing, it sounds stupid. It sounds like something that a character should have. It sounds like something they shouldn't have a gauge for. Um, and then they got the revenge gauge, and they got I think they got another gauge, but I'm not certain. But I'll leave this up to you guys. So I'll catch up.